Hello and welcome back to whatever it is that this is. I'm your host, David. I'll be taking you through one of the coolest uh, little tips and tricks you can use to save voices in your games uh, if you're looking to play some audio that needs to follow the player around. Now the end result kind of looks like this where we're on a boat and able to walk around and the water will be positionally following us to the sides of the boat but also around the boat uh, only using one voice as opposed to putting point emitters all over the place. So as we pan left and right, we'll still hear it. How do we do this? Well, first up we go tools, new C++ class. Um, and if you follow my last video, you'll be able to do that as well. You'll be able to click actor, click new, name your actor. For now, I'm gonna call it, I think a spline audio follower, uh, something like that, something that's nice and clear. And it will generate a header file and a source file. Uh, now it, if you haven't opened your project before, it might take a little bit of time. Uh, if you're doing this on Mac, it might index for four or five hours because reasons. But what are we looking to do here? Well, we should have two files. We'll have a header file and a source file. Um, they may be in different spots of the project depending on where you saved them. But we're looking to uh, kind of zip through this and add pseudocode for where we might want to plug in uh, certain components. So we're looking to add the uh, reference to the spline, a speed that we want to move along the spline, and a reference to the audio component that should move along the spline. It's going to kind of be a, a rotating speaker that'll fly around and sort of follow us around. Uh, we'll also need to keep account of where in the spline we are because we're going to kind of be measuring our distance and then snapping it to a position somewhere along the spline's total length. Uh, so in the header, in the source file, we're going to look at these three methods, the constructor, the begin play, and the tick component. In the constructor, which is when we're literally making the object, we're going to, we're actually going to create these when we create the object. So we're going to create a spline that we'd like to reference. We're going to create the audio source that we'd like to reference, and we're going to attach those together and set up sort of a, a parent uh, child hierarchy going on there. In the begin play, We'll look to uh, initialize a few of those components and kind of check that they're all working. Uh, check that, you know, we actually have things like the world. Check like we actually have uh, each of these components that are that are necessary for this because otherwise we might run into null references and, and some, some yucky bits and pieces. We'll want to get the position that we should be at the um, and, and sort of an, an initial position to move. And then in the tick component, we're going to do all of our logic. Now we could break this out into a different function. I'm going to do it all inside the tick component for now. The steps are essentially finding the point that we uh, should be um, in terms of the point on the spline closest to the player. Um, and I'm going to use the player for, for reference here. We will need to get the player um, and where the, that player's location is and uh, then use that to key things. Um, we're going to need the point that we should be moving along to um, to stay in sync with the player, so to follow them around. And uh, then we'll need to actually move the speaker itself and update the positions uh, so that we can you know, clean up what we've done. So let's move on to the implementation of this now. Inside the uh, the header, we're going to need to include these three files, this actor component, spline component, and an audio component. Depending on what you want to do, you might also need to impl implement the game framework actor script as well. But don't stress too much about that right now. So we have these uh, different access specifiers, public, protected, private. Uh, we need to make sure that we are using an actor um, as our base class before and in last class we use a uActor component being a component that goes on an actor. In this instance, we're actually looking to make the whole Blueprint class itself. So we'll need a reference to the spline. Uh, what does that look like? Well, it looks like adding a uSpline component and a pointer uh, called spline to follow and adding these props here for edit anywhere and Blueprint read write. Now, if you don't add these Blueprint read write, you won't see it in the editor, so you won't be able to add the spline. Uh, we'll need the speed that we're going to move along. I'm just going to use a float set to a thousand. This is pretty like aggressive in terms of snapping. Uh, so you could edit that as well. We'll need a reference to the audio component that should be moving along the spline, which we're going to have U audio component um, movable audio source is what I've called it. Um, and it'll also need edit anywhere so that we can assign a uh, sound, sound itself. That will actually come from this audio component, which of course Xcode didn't want to help me out here because <laughs> of course it didn't. 
Uh, we'll also need the position along the spline's total length, like we talked about before, which we're going to use as the current key being the sort of key moment that it's moving along. In the source file, we're going to start with the constructor where we're going to do things like creating the spline, creating the audio source, attaching them and setting them all up. We're going to look at the begin play, which is what happens when we first hit play when the game starts. And then the tick component, which is going to be updating all the time, getting our new positions, getting our new um, areas and moving all this stuff around. So inside the constructor, uh, we're going to start with creating the spline we'd like to reference. So in this instance, we've got a reference to a spline already. So we can use this create default sub object, uh, pass in the type use spline component, and then just name it spline component. Um, this does come from this spline component here, um, given that these types do need to match up if you're looking to create them. This way, the root component, which is the, the base root level of the actor, uh, will be set up as well to be this spline um, so that, you know, if we moved it below, then the, you know, the spline audio follow would end up actually getting stirred around. So in this instance, we've created a spline to follow. We're going to set that as the root component of this hierarchy so that the child component will be the, the audio speaker that flies around. Next up, we'd like to create the audio source that we'd like to reference by using the movable audio source reference in a very much the same way as we use the spline reference here, uh, except that we're passing in an audio component instead of uh, a spline component, as you'd imagine, using the same create default sub object as we did with spline to follow. I'm just naming them audio component because I'm really creative. And we're going to attach them by uh, using this pointer arithmetic here or this pointer address here because of this tiny little asterisk here. Um, we're going to use this arrow to point towards setting up the attachment um, and attaching it to the root component. And with that, we've kind of created when we right click and make one of these blueprints, we've actually made a, uh, a, a, a this hierarchy where there's a spline and an audio as a child object of that spline. And that's the whole blueprint that we have here. Next up, we're going to check uh, that we actually made a spline and that we actually can get a world. And if we can't get a world, we won't be able to get a player. We won't be able to do any of this stuff. So we're just going to return. I'm going to use this or syntax here. So we're just checking if we're not following a spline and we don't have a world or we don't have a world, get rid of those. And that's just checking that we have the component references necessary. Next up, we'd like to get the current position that we should be at. This is like a default position. Uh, where we're going to get the current key, get the spline to follow, uh, which is, there's our current key there. So it's set at one to start with, but we're, we're going to move around almost instantaneously. We're going to get the spline and we're going to use this find input key closest to world location. And this is the key along the point of the spline that's going to match closest to the world location, given that people use this so much. Uh, we're going to use get actor location, which we used in the last video, um, which you can also check out uh, if you are interested on playing uh, ambient sources. So what we're doing here is getting the current position, getting the point on the spline closest to it and setting our key there. Finally, we have the real meat and potatoes where we're setting up the tick function from the parent um, or the, the base class tick function that's just going to be running every frame and we're going to get the player and their location. For this, I'm going to use a player controller, uh, set it to player controller and getting the first player controller. Uh, now this could be cached so that we just get this once instead of getting it all the time. And it could also probably change in functionality based on if you're a multiplayer or targeting a specific object as opposed to targeting a player in particular. Uh, in this instance, it should be fine, but uh, keep in mind that there you know, isn't always a first player uh, that you want to orbit this thing around. We're going to check that that was successful before moving on just because it is one of the hairier checks that's there. So we're going to check that there is a player controller and that the player controller does have a pawn that we, we can get. Next up, we're using an F vector, which is an X, Y, Z for the player location, which will be the player controller's pawn's location or actor's location. We're going to check that we could do that same check that we had in begin play um, because begin play will run first and then it'll start ticking. So we do actually need to check both um, in so that we don't have one frame of, of uninitialized behavior. The target key, which is where we're moving towards, will be the same functionality, which is find input key closest to world location. And the target location will be the output of the splines 
uh, input key. So we're going to sort of detect this, the point closest to the player, then pass that in to get the location out, then pass the uh, then pass that in to get the direction that we should be moving to, um, so that we're not doing anything crazy there. Um, and the way we get the direction is basically taking the target location where where the spine wants to move to with the target key and taking away the, our current safe normal from that. Finally, we'll get the new position out of that by getting the direction, multiplying it by the speed and the time it would take to get our source, uh, our movable audio source that is, uh, to this position. So this all accounts for our spline movement and our bindings, um, and we're able to get the component location and, and the speed, and that this way it'll sort of lurk between two different spaces, uh, or multiple different spaces, I, su I should say, by the delta time. So every frame, it's going to kind of multiply its out by speed. The only part left is whether or not we have moved there or not. So we need to take all this data out and have our new position, generate the new key for where that should be, um, and again, we're kind of doing this in a verbose way just to play with spine, splines a little bit. And we're able to get our new spline position, which is essentially the same as our new position, I suppose. But we're getting back to the spline uh, in this instance by using the key that we have. Finally, we're going to set the movable audio sources location to that new spline position and update our current key. And that's the whole system. Uh, it's a lot of going in and out of splines uh, to work out where we're supposed to be and when we're supposed to be moving to it. But it looks like this, um, where I can create a new spline audio follower and uh, this spline component, you know, when I right click, I can go add new spline and then I can actually just draw uh, with this spline tool that Unreal already has and mo move these points around and then it'll be a track that the audio source can kind of float around that track. Um, I think it's a super effective way to save voices when you do this uh, process and I think it sounds great. It's nice and positional, especially if you layer in some 2D ambience at the same time. So you have uh, maybe like a, well, or like a quad thing happening for base layer waves and then like the water lapping against the boat to be uh, the different sound that would come from this component itself. Now you can see it updating uh, a lot and sort of zipping around and detecting its positions and things like that. Um, and I think the system works super well. Now uh, there's a bunch of ways that this can be used and it's really good for rivers and it's really good for yeah oceans and waves and something that um, needs to kind of catch up with the player, but you don't want to have positional point sources along an entire river eating up all that calculations, um, especially if you go into distances and things like that. So uh, we might even update this in the future to have uh, updated distances based on, you know, uh, it's sounding different as you come up to it and move away from it and things like that. So thanks for, uh, thanks for dropping by, um, for all the new followers and subscribers I have, uh, I'd like to welcome you to the channel. Um, I got this pack, uh, from here and I actually haven't picked a, picked a spot yet. <laughs> um, and it's the, it's one of the assets that you get for free from Epic this month. And I'm a massive fan of pirate ships and have not yet worked on any big pirate ship game. So I guess I kind of have to now cause I already have the boat. So uh, follow me at Dweaver Audio on Twitter. Um, go to weaveraudio.com to check out my ambience machines or uh, my game audio reference material um, through the audio atlas uh, or just say hello. Um, keep doing that and I'll see you next time.